Welcome to Locked On Badgers. We're going to talk Purdue today, um, which I think low key might be the most important game left on the Badger schedule. Yep, including Minnesota. We're going to talk about that today and more. I have a great guest, good conversation. Let's go on Locked On Badgers. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, my friends? I am Ryan Herrings, your host of Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. Really appreciate everybody tuning in, as always. Sorry that this show got out a little bit late. Um, I've been battling kind of a cold, so if my voice goes in and out, that's why. But listen, I've said it before, I'm like Leo Chanel. I'm not missing any reps. Like, every day we got this. Uh, today's show is brought to you by Underdog. Sign up on underdogfantasy.com with a promo code Locked On and get your first deposit doubled up to $100. And with that, we're going to get right into it. we got a great guest. He's been on the show with the therapy sessions before. Uh, but this is our first, like, real collab. Uh, we got Rajiv on the show. What's going on, my man? Hey, good morning, man. Thank you for having me on. Oh, I love it. Yeah, your insight's always awesome. And, again, the, the goal of the show is always just to elevate more voices, get more conversation, more viewpoints. And, you know, you've been awesome. So uh, I'm glad to do it. I'm appreciative of your time for sure. And we're going to talk just Purdue. Like, we haven't done our Purdue preview yet. Um, I want to start here with you, kick it over to you. Uh, why does this Purdue team scare you, or or don't they? They do. They do because, look, and Purdue's always been a team that's got a high passing offense, right? And based on what we've seen this year so far, we have some secondary problems. And I think that, you know, like normal, Purdue's going to throw it all over the map. However, looking at their team a little bit this year and what they've done, they're kind of sneaky balanced. You know, they've mm -hmm. got um, Devin Mockaby at running back. They've got the Iowa transfer Charlie Jones from, from as wide receiver. And while they've thrown the ball a lot, I think they have 300 and some pass attempts. They have 230 running rush attempts. So they're, they're kind of sneaky balanced. Um, but look, they've outscored their opponents 60 to 10 in the first quarter. I mean, that's, that says a lot. And it means that we have to be ready to kind of start this game hot. Otherwise, they're going to jump on us. And we don't want to be in a position where we're chasing mm -hmm. the game from behind. So yeah, I mean, I feel like this this team is scary because they've got they always have a lot of skill position talent. I mean, this is nothing new for Purdue. Aiden O'Connell's been there for a couple of years now. Their quarterback, I mean, he's got a lot of skill. And mm -hmm. the one thing you know about Purdue, they're going to spread it out. They're going to throw it all over, and which means that our cornerbacks, our safeties are going to be on islands, right? So, what we saw last week with with Shaw and Hallman, that's going to happen again. And Michigan State's receivers and quarterback are not at the level of Purdue's, and that is where I think we have a problem. Where we have an opportunity, though, is their defense is not the strongest. So we have to be able to kind of push the envelope there a little bit. Um, but what do you think about what do you think about them? Yeah, Purdue's terrifying uh, to me, quite frankly, which is crazy, right? Because Wisconsin's beat them, I think it's what, 15 straight times in Madison yeah. or whatever it is, you know. But Wisconsin, uh, Purdue, I'm telling first of all, they always find dudes at receiver. Charlie, like Charlie Jones runs every single, for those of you who haven't seen him, because um, I don't imagine a lot of people are out there just watching Purdue games, but he runs every route in the route tree. Like they give him the ball on slants, deep passes. He he runs away from coverage, but he's tough as heck. Like he will go up that, I mean, not to, not to knock on Skyler, but everyone remembers that Skyler play where he got the ball kind of thrown up to him and he alligator armed it between two defenders against Northwestern. And Skyler's going to make a bunch of plays going forward. So I'm not trying to, Listen, Charlie Jones goes up in contact and makes those catches. Yeah. Like, he's a legit dude. Aiden O'Connell, I think, is the second-best quarterback in the Big Ten. Um, and then, like you said, Maccabee. And this is something that's a great point. Jim Leonard mentioned this. Jim Leonard said, you know, in the past, they would just go uh, – Purdue would just pass, 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 pass. And Maccabee's coming off a game against Nebraska. I think he ran for – I got it right here uh, – 30 for 178 against Nebraska. And he's got an yeah. unusual running style. So – Here's here's my question to you. This is this is what drives me nuts because I was on the, the Lockdown Big Ten podcast. We were talking about this game. What do we do really good defensively right now? Like, I'm not sure we could shut down. We're seventh in the conference in rushing defense. Our secondary just kind of got picked apart. I'm not sure where I – I don't know. You know, it's kind of a scary thought because typically that's where our strength lies, right? I mean, we've seen that time and time again. Our linebackers are where that strength is, our upfront play. It's not there right now. You know, yeah, we've got a lot of good players in that in that group that can make big plays. Like, you know, Keanu Benton can can clog up that line yep. any day, and he can he can make impact plays constantly. But it's not consistent enough, and we're we're not getting that play out of the linebackers right now either. Consistency. So yes, I think it's I think still the strength of our defense is still the line 
and the linebackers if you're going to assign a strength to someone. But the question is, do they have the consistency? And with a team that like Devin McAbee averages 5.7 yards a carry, which by the way is the same as Braylon Allen. Now he doesn't have the same number of carries as Braylon Allen, but they're productive. So, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and they they don't, they don't pass on first down as much as they used to. I think they're, they, 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 they're still doing it more often than not, but it's, it's a little more balanced. So I feel like if we don't stop them right away, they could, they could potentially have a field day, but we have seen that level of, 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 you know, success, but it's just about getting the consistency. And that's really the real question is that's what I'm looking for tomorrow is are, are we going to be consistent and are we going to be able to attack their D? Yeah. It's, it's a huge test test uh, for this Badgers defense because Purdue is still going to spread you out. Uh, they're still going to throw a lot. They average 15 more plays per game than Wisconsin. They average uh, 77 plays. We were at 62. So they're still playing with pace, but now they're playing with pace and balance, right? And they're playing with pace, balance and weapons, which they always have the weapons, but it's never had that pace and balance. And Wisconsin has ter- are traditionally really been able to force them into playing one style of football. And now with their strengths on offense and kind of some of the weaknesses we just talked about on our defense, we can't really dictate that. You know, so Purdue's going to be in a spot for the first time in a long time against us where they can kind of pick how they want to attack us. And it's defensively, I think it's going to be a struggle. Um, I want to flip it back to the other side. We talked about their defense, our offense. And we're going to get into game predictions later, but mm-hmm. I do think that's where Wisconsin can win this game. Like, yeah. I think we have to be more aggressive because their secondary hasn't been great. Their passing defense hasn't been great. The rushing defense is middle, middle of the, the pack, our middle of the Big Ten. You know, but we have to be balanced. We can't just run into a brick wall. Totally, and and we saw that in the Northwestern game. We saw that balance that we can have, and if we have that, I was talking to a very good friend of mine, is a Purdue fan, and he was talking to him yesterday. He said, if Speed at your wider wide receivers is what's going to get us. And we have that. You know, we've got Skyler, we've got D- DK. They, mm-hmm. they have the speed and Marcus Allen for that matter. So if we are going to take chances, if we're going to be unpredictable, and if we're going to be brave out there and, and with our play calling, then yeah, I think we can take advantage of them. But the one thing that we've consistently done year after year against Purdue is run the ball well. You know, we we always do that against them. And I still think it's going to be about can we establish the run? I'm not saying we has to have Braylon Allen has to have 150 yards, but he can't have 40. You know, we've right. got to be able to have the balance because the play in order for the play action to work, obviously we have to have a bit of a rush attack. So I just I'm going to be looking very early on in that game. What kind of push is our line getting against theirs? Because they don't have the strongest D line. They've got mm-hmm. speed on their edges, but they don't necessarily have the strongest you know girth up front. So if we can get a little push on their line. Can we just force that issue a little bit, get that play action working? Because then I believe that Bobby Ingram will be more unpredictable as long as we can show that we can get a little bit of push from that line. Then I think we can open it up a little bit and we'll see what happens. But it is a defense that we should be able to take advantage of. The question is, will we, right? I mean, that's the same thing we saw last week against Michigan State. It's, are we going to do this or are we going to fall back into our shell? Yeah, no, it's fascinating. And quite frankly, we don't really know, right? We have a two... Listen, we have a two-game sample size on Bobby Ingram as the sole play caller, as the sole like offensive input guy. We have a two-game sample size, and quite frankly, one was really good and one was really bad. And I, I don't want to hear people keep saying, well, Northwestern's terrible. Michigan State was terrible. We were yeah, favored terrible. on the road by seven with, after firing a coach. Like, let's let's call a spade a spade. Like, both those teams weren't good, and we looked different. Um, Absolutely. It's weird. Um, let's let's go on. Uh, any anything else just about Purdue that you want to talk about? Uh, I do want to point out. It's interesting that we're favored in this game. Uh, <laughs> Purdue has won two two games. Uh, they've won four in a row at this point, and two of those were on the road: Minnesota and Maryland. So it's it's not. And there were dogs in both those games, by the way. So yeah. they went onto the road. Minnesota beat them as a dog. Went to Maryland, beat them as a dog. You know, now they're coming into Madison as a dog. Uh, really quick, should Wisconsin be favored in this game? No, definitely not. I'm shocked that we are. And I think, I mean, yeah, okay, we're playing Camp Randall. Is that the only reason we're favored? I mean, I, I feel like somehow there's still a lot of belief out here. I live in Vegas. There's a lot of belief out here in Vegas that, you know, the Badgers are still going to be a good team. And, and we could be, but no, we shouldn't be favored. I mean, look, this team, this team throws, has completed 30 more passes than we've even attempted. I mean, right. they're, they're, they are a different level of offense. And frankly, over the last few years, their coach, Brom, has really shown over the years. I mean, he's he's growing that program. I mean, he's taking Purdue that was a kind of a little bit bottom of the bottom of the barrel West team, 
and making it into a contender. They're not perennial winners. I mean, they haven't won it yet, but they're they're going to be a good team. And they are, you know, a few years ago, Wisconsin could look at their schedule and say, all right, look, there's a lot of teams here that we know we're going to be able to get by. And Purdue was, used to be one of those teams. They've always played us well, but we knew we could beat them. Now with the way we're playing, every game on the Big Ten slate is a tough game. And yeah. we showed that last week. So that's what, and this team's just better. They're better. They've got more skill positions. Can we beat them? Yes, because we have the talent to take advantage of them. But they are a team that's playing much better. They they beat Minnesota. They've beaten good teams. They're scoring a lot of points. They're giving up a lot of points. So it's clear, like the, the way we can beat them is out there. The question is simply, will we? Yeah, I think you're dead on with that. I, I don't think we should be favored either. Wisconsin is getting some type of major Camp Randall boost still. But listen, we were we were home favorites against Illinois. How'd that work out? Home <laughs> favorites against Washington State. How'd that work out? All right. We got more to talk about. We got to take yeah. a quick break uh, with our friends. We're going to keep Rajiv on the show as long as possible. Um, but today's show is brought to you by our friends at Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest way to spice up your college football weekend. Um, a simple way to go get started, earn cold, hard cash in a single day. You no longer have to wait for the, the season to end to collect on that money. Um, cold, hard cash, pick your right players, parlay your players, tons of great player props. That's one of my favorite things about Underdog Fantasy is you log in and they have tons, like I said, every every major receiver, quarterback, running back, over, under on yardage totals. You can pair two to five of them together to have some really fun, enjoyable action to follow. No more just, am I going to take Wisconsin or Purdue? It's what is Graham Mertz going to throw for? What is Aiden O'Connell going to go throw for? It adds a whole nother layer of fantasy sports. It's totally fun and really enjoyable to spice up your weekend, like I said. Easy to play, easy to sign up. It's one of the fastest growing fantasy games out there. And we have a great offer for you from Locked On. Sign up with promo code Locked On. That's one word. Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. Deposit $100, get $100 free. F R E E, capital letters. Go to underdogfantasy.com, find the Underdog Fantasy app in the App Store, Google Play Store. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code Locked On. Get in on the college football pick'em action today. I want to thank everybody again for tuning in to Locked On Badgers, your team every day, your show every day, here to build up the Badger community. That's what we're all about. Uh, bring Rajiv back on. And I want to start here. <clears throat> I think this is the most important game on the rest of the Badger schedule, even, even including the fact that we have to play Minnesota. Um, curious your thoughts on that statement. I disagree. If, uh, my official answer is I don't think it's the most important game. However, I can kind of see your point because my guess is, and I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this, I'm, my mm -hmm. guess is because in order for us to go bowling, we're going to need a few more wins. And so we, we've got to get those somewhere, and that's probably why you think that. But from that perspective, it's extremely important because we need to right the ship a little bit. You know, We need to be able to, to, to get some of these wins going. We don't, have a, we don't have a lot of winnable games on the schedule left when you look at the way we played last week. Maryland's a decent team. Nebraska, we should beat them. But I still think Minnesota is the most important game on the season because it's Minnesota, because of what happened last year, and because we're not gonna we're not competing for the West. We're not we're we're, we're trying to get a bowl game here. So to me, the most important thing is get get that axe and beat the Gophers. But I can see kind of because of you know look we've had one good game under Leonard, we've had one bad game under Leonard. So now where is, we're in sort of a, a little bit of fork in the road. Which way are we going to go? Um, but so I still think the other, the other games are at the end of the, are more important, but I can see your point. Why do you feel it's, it's the most important game? Yeah, I think a lot of people probably disagree on me with this, which is totally cool. Um, emotionally, Minnesota is the most important game. Maybe I should phrase it like that. Beating PJ Fleck, getting the X back. And quite frankly, there are seniors on this team who have put so much into this, this program. Right, guys like Keanu Benton, guys like Isaac Renda, who's battled back from multiple, so many injuries, right? He deserves to chop down a goalpost as a senior. Like, so emotionally, yes, Minnesota's the most important. Strategically, like, if you're just looking at where the season could go, I think it's Purdue because we're, again, we're one, momentum really matters in college sports. It really matters with young athletes. And we're one on one under Jim Leonard. We're about to hit the bye, right? So this game before the bye, how you go into that bye week, I think, is so, so critically important. And you're either going to go in 2-1, and one, feeling pretty good, right? You beat a hot Purdue team at home. You beat Northwestern. Or you're going to go into that bye 1-2 and two and still need two more bowl wins. I don't know how much belief is going to be there, really, with a program that fired its head coach and then dropped the game to a bad Michigan State team and then dropped the game at home to Purdue. 
and then you go into a bye week where you can have a lot of people kind of questioning their futures in the program, right? We still are in that 30-day transfer window. And I want to do a show on this, but I actually think that's where we're going to see some movement. When that bye week hits, players are going to be able to step back, take a look. I just think there's a lot of distractions. And if you don't get this thing moving in the right direction, I don't know what comes out of the bye week. So that's kind of why I think Purdue is so critically important. It's the timing of the bye. It's getting some momentum. It's being able to take that break in season, having some success, and getting ready to attack those last four games. I think that's a good point. Um especially because on the back end of the bye week, we have another home game against Maryland. Mm-hmm. So I think that's, that's a really good point because if we can get two wins on, you know, on either side of the bye week, that puts us in a situation where we've got five wins. Now we only, we need one more. We feel like we can get that. So I feel like that that's, it's good. And it, it does kind of set the tone for salvaging the season and not even necessarily salvaging it, but like making it, you know, what could go from a bad season to a, a decent season, a good season, mm-hmm. great season. That's, that's kind of over now. Right. So, but I, I feel like I, I see your point. I, you know, when I look at the schedule, I, I look every year. Where, where's the Iowa game? And of course, yeah. you know, Minnesota is at home or away. Well, how are they looking? And I think that they've had a bit of a, a you know a tail off from their kind of hype of being the best team in the West. I think now Illinois somehow gotten that that tag. Um, but you know, I think that it's still so important. And you're right, emotionally, Minnesota is always going to be important for us. Um, but I think it's because of after what happened last year too. It's just, it adds so much more to it. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean, I, I see your point. You, you bring up a lot of good points about the bye week and you know, how you go into that is super important. And then it kind of dictates how you come out of it. Like you mentioned. Yeah. I don't want to use the word, I would never use the word fragile. Um, but I do think that the program right now, this season for this year is kind of at that tipping point. And it can go, like you said, a fork in the road. It can go kind of one of two ways. And I think it would be hard to go in a way we wanted to go if we go into that bye week coming off of like another loss. It would feel like all that new coach momentum is kind of worn thin in a way. Um, it, it would it would mean our therapy session will not be fun at all. On oh, <laughs> brutal. You know, and by the way, like people probably know this. I'm sure people know this, but I'm a Wisconsin fan. So like I had someone in the comments or DM me say, Oh, it's it's great that all this stuff is happening. It gives you some more more stuff to talk about. I'm like, I don't like this. I listen. I want to be talking about a great Badgers team. I don't want to be talking about an interim coach and are we going to beat Purdue and can we be bowl eligible? Yeah, it like brings up easy topics, but like, you know what else would be easy topics? You know, how are we going to match up in the Big Ten championship game? Yeah. Like that yeah. would be a fun topic, right? Yeah. Like or how go- many four stars are we going to land? Like, right. Or going back to you know, like, hey, how, uh, what are the what are the scenarios that get us into the college football playoff? Right. That's something we want to talk about. Yeah. I want to game out those. You know, it was like your show. You did a great show about the the big board um, this week for coaching. But I, yeah, I want I want that show to turn into the big board of scenarios for the CFP. Right. Like, right. That's the way we want to be talking about. So yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I've been a, a Badger fan for twenty three years, and it's just you know, I mean. I live and die by this kind of stuff. And it's just, it's, it's, we want to see this team succeed and we want to be able to talk about it in a fun way. Yeah. A hundred percent agree. Like right now you, it's funny in my brain, uh, something popped up. You said, you know, game planning scenarios to get to the college football playoffs. We're like game planning scenarios to get into the Mayo bowl right now. We're like, okay, so what's your, you know, it's just like, it's so weird to be in the spot as a Badger fan because a, we've been spoiled. Like we can all acknowledge that this has been the most consistent non blue blood program in America. I will firmly 100%. stand on that hill and die. Hundred percent, and the stats, you know, the stats show that basketball and football, like it's the yeah. most consistent basketball and football non-blue blood program in the freaking country, and we've been spoiled by that. But it doesn't make it easier when it's bad being spoiled. So, uh, let's finish up here with the importance of this game. You mentioned it coming out of the bye week. We got Maryland, and then we we have to go on the road. You go on the road, Nebraska, Iowa. So let's say we. We need three wins, right? That's that's our bowl roadmap. Yep. Um, where out of just kind of quickly, those five games, do you see the three wins being most likely? Because we've already talked about it. We should be favored. Uh, we both agree. Purdue should be favored in this game. So yep. where are your three wins if we're getting them? I feel like the three wins, if we're getting them, are Maryland, Nebraska, and Minnesota. That's where okay. I see the three wins. I Iowa has – a really bad offense, but their defense, I mean, doesn't yield anything. And I think mm-hmm. that's tough. Plus, it's a road game, it's a rivalry, and that's going to be mm-hmm. really hard. So, I see that in the same light as the Purdue game. We might be a little bit favored, but they're probably the team that should be favored. So, when I look at Maryland, Nebraska, Minnesota, that's where I see, like, okay, that's where the three ones need to come from. What about you? Yeah. No, I think that's fair. Um, that 
that's mine three. That's my three as well. I think going to Kinnick, as you mentioned, is really tough. And I don't think we, frankly, I mean, I don't want to give away what we're going to talk about in the next segment where we kind of discuss what's going to happen, but I think Purdue should be favored. So, yeah, I'm right there with you. If we get three, I think it's going to be at Nebraska, uh, Maryland, and home against Minnesota. All right, let's 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 take a quick break um, for just to talk about some of the sponsors on the show. And we're going to come back. We're going to talk to you about what we think is going to happen and maybe a player that could be a key to the Badgers. That's coming up next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, a quick break for our sponsors. All right, coming back in, we're going to bring Rajiv back into the show, a friend of the show, been on several times. Uh, really appreciate the time as always, man. Um, I do want to take an opportunity, totally up to you. I don't know if you have uh, any social media that you, you like putting out there. If you if you do, you know, where can people find you? Yeah, you know, it's uh, I'm at, uh, at Rajiv underscore 722 on Twitter, but uh, fairly new to the kind of to the to that game. So um, hopefully just on here more. I love it. Uh, always welcome, man. And usually in the therapy sessions. Um, so again, the goal is to get smarter people than me on the show, different perspectives. I think with Rajiv, like many people, we have accomplished both of those goals. So I really appreciate it. Uh, let's talk predictions. What's going to happen this weekend? We already mentioned Wisconsin is a two point five or two and a half point favorite. Um, what do you think is going to happen this weekend? You know, I've been thinking about that for the last couple of days, and I. Look, I actually I, I am predicting an overtime game. I think this is going to go into overtime, mm. um, and I'm struggling to what's going to happen in overtime. But I just feel like Purdue's defense is there. We've talked about it, you know, on the show so far today. Their their defense is out there for the taking, and I think, you know, as long as we can mix it up from a play calling standpoint, and we can get the ball going to the receivers, I do think um, that you know, we can push the envelope a little bit. So I see this being a really, really close game. Um, look, sadly, I, I think Purdue's going to get the best of us tomorrow. I just, I just do. I, I don't, I don't like ever predicting that the Badgers are going to, are not going to come out on top, but I just feel like if it goes to overtime, they've got a little edge. If it doesn't go to overtime, I think it's going to be a close game, but I, I really hate to say it, but I do think Purdue's, they've got more weapons and I don't know that our defensive backs are going to hold up against them. And that's just, that's just me being real. And I know that a lot of people hate to pick against them and I don't like to do it, but I just, I don't feel like this is where we're going to get one of our wins. I hope I'm wrong. I hope on the therapy session tomorrow, I get to come on and be like, I was so wrong and be a lot of fun. go Badgers. Right. But I just, I just don't think that's going to happen. Right. I mean, yeah, I, I'm right there with you. I hate it though. So, I mean, I picked Wisconsin beat Illinois. I picked Wisconsin beat Washington state. I picked Wisconsin to cover against Ohio state, not win, but cover. Right. I picked the over on Wisconsin this year. I picked them to beat Michigan State and cover. I got to break that trend. Like, they got to show it. I, I got to pick Purdue. Purdue's just, they're not only are they probably better, but they have, are playing so well right now. I mean, they're just playing so well offensively. We just yeah. saw a Michigan State team, and you brought it up, that isn't as good as Aiden O'Connell and, and, you know, his weapons and even the running game kind of have their way with the Badger secondary. Like the yep. Badger secondary didn't look great in that game, and now you're facing a team that's going to put four or five wide out. I, I don't see it. I think Purdue wins. I think it's going to be like a thirty-one to twenty type game, some, somewhere like that. I think it'd be close, Ooh. but maybe Purdue scores like gets a, kind of a, a late touchdown to push it a little bit more. Um, yeah, I just I don't see it, man. Uh, I do want to ask: is there is there any player, anybody on Wisconsin that you're really looking for here that can, you think can maybe flip the game, flip the script? So I feel like that player is Skylar Bell tomorrow. I feel like, you know, look, because Chim Dika is obviously going to get their best um, their best corner. I, I feel like it's going to come down to our receivers and it's going to come down to whether or not we can we can ex we can kind of expose their weak secondary. Mm -hmm. Just like they're going to kind of do against us. So I feel like Skylar Bell, if he goes out there and gets five, six catches, you know, maybe he has a, maybe he has a breakout day. Maybe he goes, goes hundred yards. I'm not saying he needs to do that, but I just, I feel like that's going to be the player. It's going to kind of be the, my barometer of, you know, what are we going to see from them is if, can we, can we kind of, you know, use their weakness um, mm -hmm. to benefit us? Like I mentioned before, I do think we need to establish the run, but the game is going to be won on whether or not Mertz can connect with DK, with Allen, with Bell. But I think Bell is the guy because he's kind of like our number two. He's got a lot of speed. Um, and I think he's going to kind of be the measuring stick for me. I love that take because I, I had the same kind of thought in my brain. I think if we win, 
it's going to be because Mertz throws the ball well. It, we will lose if we just try to lean on Braylon Allen and have the Michigan State game plan. I, we will 100% lose this game if we do that. We have to have that Northwestern game plan. And we still may not win, right? We, we talked about it after Northwestern. It's just about the process. It's about seeing, seeing progress and evolution in the offense. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean we're going to beat Purdue. Purdue's good. Like, even if we play well, Purdue could beat us. Uh, yeah, you but, know, it's, it's, it, someone said it on the Northwestern reaction show. I think it's, it's not always about the result, especially when we're three and four, it's about the performance and what are we going to see? You know, I look at, yeah, I, I expect Wisconsin to not win tomorrow, but I do want to see us have a reaction. You know, we had a, we can, we came to Northwestern and had a reaction, right? We showed what we were going to do. So now we had a bad week last week. Let's have another reaction. What are we going to do? And you can kind of tell how that's going to play out with the attitude of the, that the lines show, right? Like, are we going to get a push? Are, is Braylon mm-hmm. going to do to establish himself? Uh, is Engram going to open up the playbook a little bit? Are we going to see more jet sweeps early? Are we going to see, you know, three-step drops? Are we going to see, you know, passing out of the shotgun, RPOs? Like, that kind of thing. Like, what are we going to see? And that's going to kind of dictate whether or not the team's really ready to have a reaction and make and have a good performance? Or are we going to kind of, as you said, just sort of go back into our shell and who knows where we go? That'd be a depressing way to limp into the bye week, man. Um, yeah. All right, we're going to wrap it up there. Did you have a score prediction? Um, I saw, so I think, uh, I think, you know, like 24 24 overtime, Purdue wins 27 24. That's my prediction. Gotcha. And yeah, that, that could totally happen. I mean, that type of score, you know, overtime's always tough, but that type of score I can totally see happening. Uh, I think, quite frankly, if Wisconsin holds Purdue to in the 20s, that's a game you should win. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. He is Rajiv, great friend of the show. Awesome insight, as always. Really appreciate you jumping on. I appreciate everybody else uh, listening to the show, whether you're on the podcast, on YouTube, whatever it is. Um, appreciate you all so much. On Wisconsin, we're going to obviously talk again tomorrow. we get got the live reaction show after Purdue. Um, also, a great swag giveaway this weekend. Again, we do giveaways on our Discord just to thank people for tuning into the show. So. I'll send that tweet out as well, that link out as well. For everyone else on Wisconsin, we'll talk tomorrow.